Well, hey guys, and welcome back to Hope Island Zoo. Hope you all are having a wonderful day so far. And today we are back in the South America house. This is our second episode on this one. And yeah, we're just getting right into it with a whole bunch of different terrariums. So this is going to be very much a small creature focused kind of thing. Uh, so we're going to be working on a bunch of smaller animals like our axolotls. We recently got those in a recent store. Uh, we also got, um, I'm trying to think, Brazilian rainbow boas. So we're working on this habitat right now. We have green iguanas and red-footed tortoises in the same enclosure. Uh, and I think the last one that we actually build for is the Nutria, which is going to be a really fun one. Wasn't planning on including them in this ha habitat build, speed build, or whatever, but it kind of worked out in that way, so I'm very excited for that. But as you guys can see, we are still continuing our little bit of, like, temple theming on throughout here, and I'm very excited about that because it's such a fun theme to work with. And I really do love, like, all the designs we're able to come up with, with, like, you know, integrating all those beautiful temple pieces all together. And another thing I really wanted to do was build with our boas over here and give them a little bit of climbing space. Because Brazilian rainbow boas, uh, they're kind of arboreal. Uh, sometimes whenever I see them, they're always on the ground. And sometimes they're always up in the trees. So I really wanted to make sure that we gave them a nice amount of both. And I'm very happy with it. It was just such a fun little habitat to build. And I really did love building around it as well. Just kind of theming out this general area. Because when we are on Hope Island, keep in mind we aren't working with the most amount of space. Uh, a lot of the spaces that we're going to be building have like a lot of animals located in a single area. And we currently have over 106, I want to say, in the current system as it stands and I really just want to expand that as much as we can, even if they are smaller species, kind of like this one in here. So moving on throughout here, we're starting to work on our axolotl tank, and originally I did build this as one big tank, but I kind of split it off later down the line, because I don't think they needed that much space to begin with. The axolotls are very small in-game, uh, and unfortunately we couldn't really use the exhibit box that uh, the one that Jen made came up with, uh, instead, we're using the prop ones, which I think work a lot better anyways for this build specifically. If you want living axolotls, that one is awesome as well. But this one, for the purposes of this build, I'm kind of happy with it. So essentially what we're doing, we're kind of lining out that glass. Again, this is one of my favorite things to do as of late. It just helps to give the glass a little bit more texture and helps it feel a lot more realistic because when you do work with glass and terrariums, there is a little bit of caulking that you can kind of see when it comes to all that stuff. So we have a little bit of that stuff come into play and I think I'll put like the angel fish and like freshwater fish in the other one. I think that might work pretty well. Also, I apologize if you hear like a siren in the back. I have my window open, but moving on throughout here, adding a little bit of a roof for these guys just as a way to help it feel a little bit more secure. I also have some keeper stage and uh, keeper access behind there. And we're also working with the fences as well. So I really wanted to start decorating the exterior of this place. Uh, essentially, the next few speed builds for the tropical house are going to be all over the place. There really isn't going to be a cohesive theme or really like a final end product for most of these builds just because it is very difficult to build inside houses, but I still wanted to make sure that you guys get the content that you guys deserve, so we're working on that all together, and essentially just trying to find ways to make this area feel a little bit more brighter, a little bit more lived in, and I do end up adding some trees in here as well. I think I add like, yeah, the acacia trees. They're just perfect trees. Oh my gosh, I love using them. So we have a bit of those on throughout here. Uh, and I'm also adding some bushes as well, just help it feel a little bit more realistic. And adding some more rock textures on the ground. This would be very much like the point in Hope Island Zoo where we are able to afford a lot more heavy theming. So that's essentially what we're taking advantage of over here. What I'm also doing over here is starting work on the Nutria Habitat. Very excited about this one. This one was super fun to do. Um, I was recently inspired by my trip to Bronx Zoo, which includes a lot of this beautiful, beautiful kind of like 
indoor habitat space and uses a lot of elevation changes. So that's really what I want to do over here. And I wanted to include a little bit of my Zoo Miami trip in here as well. So we kind of have a little bit of guest interaction with the actual water itself. So we have a little bit of a bubble come into play. You'll see that come into play in just a little bit, but for the time being, it's just lining up the habitat and making sure that everything flows nicely. So here I am actually designing like the habitat. It's not really anything too big. I really just wanted to make sure that our like space is relatively smaller than uh, what would normally happen because spacing in Planet Zoo, of course, as you guys know, really is kind of difficult to get right. And you would imply that they would have some backstage access as well and some backstage room that uh, kind of connects with all this stuff out here so they can do whatever. And over here, we're getting to work on our actual viewing portal. So I really wanted to build these just as a way to help the area feel a little bit more interesting and kind of bring in a lot more interactivity to the habitats themselves. So we kind of line them up against the wall with these just to have it feel, again, very much like that glass is still being supported. And is still being, um, you know, it's supported by, you know, the caulking, it's supported by all that stuff. I also wanted to have this, like, really include a lot more wood and, like, faux wood and stuff like that. I feel like that would be really fun to do. Uh, just because, I don't know, we were working with the temple pieces over there in this habitat. I really wanted to do something more so along the lines of, like, I'm not really sure, maybe a little bit more natural in it. Um, moving on throughout here and just making sure that the ground is taken into account as well and I don't know I'm pretty happy with that and I don't know especially for Nutrias which were okay they were in the domestic store right I don't know why but I thought that was a perfect excuse to kind of bring in some more species in the South America house just because I don't know like I don't really see them in zoos all that often, but they're still wicked cool species, so we have a few of them in here. I think we only have four. I think I accidentally put in six, but hey, what can you do? Um, but moving on through here and adding the rest of that caulking, and also adding some more faux trees. I really wanted to have this feel a little bit more forested in here, uh, because I think as we go through this entire building, I want to have like these different sections. Maybe have one dedicated to like water and like mangrove forest, so that will probably be this section. I may do one that's kind of like desert, so we can have like Mars over there and other kinds of uh, animals. Uh, I'm it's all being planned as we kind of go along. Keep that in mind. And I also add a little bit more uh, supports up here. I think we changed those out for more of a red color anyways. So we have all that right there, and we also include the fences as well. It's just have it feel um. You know, a little bit better, a little bit more supported, and a lot more safer for the guests. We don't want them falling into, like, you know, a five-foot drop. Not really five feet. It's probably more like four feet. I don't really know. I don't, I don't really know too well. But moving on throughout here, and I just really wanted to make sure that we kind of broke up this section a little bit from the rest. And originally, I go through with this kind of, like, gravel, kind of like uh, mud. Not mud, but um, wood chips. Kind of like some wood chip stuff but I think I may go back and replace it with sand. I know it's quite a crazy idea, but I think it would be bright enough. Sorry if you heard me hit my laptop right there. I feel like it would be a bright enough color to really differentiate this area from the rest because I do think it blends in a little bit too much with the surrounding area, and I do want to fix that later down the line. So we could keep working with that in a little bit and just getting a path down here just to make sure the guests are able to access this. And yeah, it's a little bit clunky, I'll admit. Um, not really the best, but I'll tell you what, it's a ramp. It gets people down here. It's ADA compliant, I really hope. And yeah, I don't know. I'm just pretty satisfied with it. And we also use the Safari Pack wood over here. Uh, really like the looks of that one. And it feels very like... I know it feels kind of tropical, so we have a little bit of that going on throughout there. I should probably decorate that a little bit more. Maybe, I'm not even sure if I'm feeling that all too much. I may go back and redo the ramp. I may just change it into stairs, because I know Bronx has like a lot of stair access. Um, that really doesn't have much ramp access, so I do want to fix that. Uh, so that'll probably be something that I'll do in a little bit. But yeah, working on the little bit of the land line over here. Shoreline, I guess. So we kind of have that all throughout here, and it feels pretty nice. Uh, just trying to work with the navigation for the Nutrias over here. 
just making sure that they are able to access most of the water. Uh, they don't really dive, unfortunately. Kind of sad. I should probably go back and try and see if I could change anything out in the uh, actual code to allow them to do that maybe later down the line. But for the time being, they swim in it, and that's all I really need. And also, adding a little bit more of a roof over here and just kind of framing the habitat a little bit better. And adding some mulch as well, just help it feel like it's a little bit more lived in. Help that feel a little bit more natural to the actual habitat itself. And we also do a few very interesting viewing galleries. So I have this one over here. It's a little bit of an extra one that allows you to see like up top on the nutrias. It's not really the most useful viewing area, but I think it works pretty well. Just gives a guess another option as a way to see them. Um, and also adding some of that gravel to the bottom of the pond. I did that recently for the uh, Asian Small Clawed Otter exhibit, and I did trade a few of those away to Forge, so I do gotta fix that up. I gotta get rid of some. But I kinda like it. I don't know, I just really like the vibes of like all the aquatic things in here. Uh, also adding a little bit more faux rocks up there, just as a way to help it feel a little bit more, um, I don't know, framed. I guess I don't really know I really wanted this to be a little bit more naturalistic than uh really temple themed and I think I did a pretty good job at it I had some like grass and like planted walls in there uh, so we have all that happening right there and I add some mulch up there as well just as a way to get a little bit more foliage up there because I felt like what else can we really put up there you know we can't really decorate it all that much uh, and I also cover up this building over here. I don't even know if I showed myself building that building. Uh, I think most of that actually got cut out, unfortunately. Yeah, now that I think about it, you guys didn't even get to see me build that little pit. Oh, well, you guys get to see it in the B-roll. That's all I really care about. Um, but also adding a few more details in here. Again, very much a emphasis on the naturalistic side of things. So I add a bunch more planted walls. I add some like branches inside the walls as well just to have it feel like it's a little bit more natural. And I also do add uh, another keeper access right there. And I do need to add a um, little guillotine door for our nutrias as well so they could actually access their backstage. Uh, working my way over here and adding a few more details on the other side. I think I make that like a duplicated uh, viewing gallery. So I actually think I do a custom one. Yeah, I do one with like... Um, bamboo and bricks i thought that was kind of cool like it was a cool little effect right there and we kind of cover it up with a few more pieces of stone and stuff like that so making our way throughout here and just making sure that everything flows nicely oh yeah i really wanted to have that right there just as a way to cover up and kind of like finalize that branch but here we are in the b-roll i know not really the biggest episode but i hope you guys still had fun with it nonetheless we covered a lot of different animals in this one and i really do hope you guys enjoyed it hope you guys are enjoying zsu as well by the way we're about to have a store so that's going to be really fun to do i'm hoping to get a really nice animal that we can build for um very excited to see that one but that's about it my friends thank you all so much for watching i appreciate you guys bearing with me for the little bit of a slower schedule I'm thinking we're going to cut back to around six or five videos a week, so I hope you guys are fine with that. But thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are always the best, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Take care, and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.